The fastest way to charge a Segway scooter is probably not what you thought. It's certainly not what I would have thought. This is my Segway 9-bot scooter. I've had it for a few years now. I traveled to New York a lot, and this thing expands my lunch choices to basically the whole island, rather than the four block radius that I'm working in. It's just great. Anyway, charging this thing takes a few hours with the wall charger. It runs at about 65 watts. This battery contains a total of 368 watt hours. So charging at 60 watts, that'll take about six hours to go from fully dead to fully charged. Of course, for your scooter's battery health, you should never let it go fully dead and you should never fully charge it. But that's neither here nor there for this video. Do you hear an echo? The TV's making sound. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. The Segway, and I'm pretty sure most of these types of scooters have this feature, it regenerates power while it's coasting or braking. Basically, all DC electric motors become generators when they're being turned by force, rather than them forcing the turning. If you apply power to this motor, the motor spins. If you just spin the motor with no power applied, it's gonna send power back in the other direction. It's all very magical. So this scooter has an accompanying app that you can leave open when you're on it. So I got this little scooter mount for my phone, and that gives me like a little dashboard when I'm driving the scooter. Shows you how fast you're going, shows you how much battery's left, but interestingly, it also shows some power data. So it shows the actual voltage of the battery, and then it shows the amount of watts going into or out of the battery, depending on if you're like powering up a hill or if you're slowing down to a stop. So you can see how much power is being sent back into the battery when you're slowing down to a stop, which is what prompted me to test this whole thing and make this video, because when you're going full speed, when you're going 18 miles an hour and you're like coasting down a hill to a stop, it's pushing like 350 watts back into the battery. And that's more than four times the amount of power that the charger puts out. But obviously, unless you live on a ski hill that has a paved path down and a working lift back up, you can't just roll down a hill long enough to charge a scooter. But... <sighs> You can put your scooter on a treadmill, strap it down, and force the wheels to spin for however long you want. How do I turn this thing on? Things I expect to learn here are, will it continue to charge the scooter at this crazy 300 watts if I can get it up to enough speed? If so, how much faster can you charge a scooter with a treadmill than you can with the wall charger? If it is faster, how much more power will I use by running a treadmill to charge the scooter versus running the wall charger to charge the scooter? I already know that these kinds of chargers are kind of inefficient anyway, just because converting AC power, the power that comes out of your wall, into DC power, the power that you charge a battery with, that process just kind of wastes a little bit of power. It turns into heat. That's why when you're like charging your laptop, you ever notice that your brick gets really hot. It's just a little bit of power wasted. I'm also gonna waste a bunch of power by running this treadmill, which also runs on a DC motor coming from an AC power source. With the addition that it has to carry this big rubber belt in a circle at whatever the max speed of this thing is. I think it goes 10 miles per hour, which also means I'm probably not gonna get the full regenerative power at 10 miles per hour. That said, my interest lies in how fast I can charge my scooter, not how efficiently I can charge my scooter. That's a challenge for another day. It's also really hot in the warehouse. I'm not sure if I'm starting to get sweaty yet or not, but I will. Plus, this battery is, like I said, 360 watt hours anyway. So we're talking about less than 10 cents of electricity that can be stored in here under perfect conditions. 1,000 watt hours, one kilowatt hour is 14 cents where I live. So 360 watt hours is little more than a third of that. Camera two has the Segway app. I've got this little dashboard. So this little circle here shows me how many watts are going into the scooter. Starting with the DC charger, plug this guy in. Oh, and then this thing is showing how much power is coming out of the wall. So with the wall charger that came with the scooter, we get to charge at 62 watts. And it takes us 74 watts to get those 62 watts. Not a whole lot of waste. 15% uh, or so. The battery right now is at 38, 36.8 volts, 50%, 1.7 amps of current. And here we have my medium fancy Nordic Track T-Series treadmill. I think it has a max speed of 10 miles per hour. Let's see how much power 10 miles per hour can put back into the scooter. That should get it going. I have to not fall off. The scooter has to not fall off. The regenerative power doesn't kick in until like maybe three miles per hour. And then you gotta give it a little blip of power. There we go. Okay, so six miles per hour, we're at 55 watts of charging. Seven miles per hour, 66 watts. Now we're already beating the wall charger. Let's see what this, <laughs> we're taking. 540 watts of power to do this. Eight miles per hour, we're at 80 watts, 85 watts. Nine miles per hour, we're at 90 watts. This thing's maxed out. 
Ooh, it just jumped up to 160. 157, 160. Okay, so at 10 miles per hour, and this is pretty easy to hold in place. I don't have to do too much work here. This scooter's charging at about 157 watts. It's taking about 730 watts to get that 157 watts. So it's a little wasteful. But look at that, we've already added 2%. I'm gonna go from 50% to 60%. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna stand here. Well, I guess I can see the distance too. It was actually a bit easier than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be kind of crazy to control it because the wheel has to fight back pretty hard. That's why I have the strap on here. The wheel's trying to stop, so it would send me off the back of this treadmill. But then you do have to also keep it steered straight. So I guess I could like get some clamps and some wood and just clamp it down straight. I bet it would still trail towards one side. So we've traveled about 0.6 miles to put on about 5% on the battery. For some reason, the treadmill wattage has calmed down a bit to now 620 to 650 watts rather than the 730 watts it started out as. No idea why that is. So we've now traveled a mile and put on about 7% on the battery. So all you need is an eight mile long hill to fully charge your scooter from, you know, 20 to 80. All right, we're up to 60%. It took about nine minutes to go about 10% of the battery. That's not gonna extrapolate across the whole battery. It'll charge at different speeds, at different voltages. But what I did notice, see how this, we still got this camera going? See how this says 156 watts, 160 watts. If I give it a little boost, we get up to 170. Woo! I saw 176 for just a moment there. So the faster you go, the faster it's gonna charge. If you can find a faster treadmill or if you can find a steep hill, and maybe I should just take this thing to a hill to try it out. I mean, the only way to charge it even faster is just to get it to go even faster. We're at Sugar Hill Mountain. I'm gonna ride that scooter down this hill and see what numbers it says. 